Hello, this is Cheryl Arias Wicker with Christian Movie Connect, and we are at the NRB convention in Nashville, Tennessee. It is day four, the last day. We've had a fabulous week. We've seen some great movies, attended some great educational sessions, and done some really good interviews with Christian film people that you're going to be enjoying in the coming weeks. Now, tonight is the closing award ceremony, and Joni Erickson Tata will be the speaker. Entertainment will be provided by Russ Taft and First Call, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's about time for me to go get myself ready, but for right now, I'm going to leave you with an interview with Steve Taylor. Hello, this is Cheryl Arias Wicker with Christian Movie Connect, and today we are with Steve Taylor, who is a singer, songwriter, and film director, and just uh, all around great person. <laughs> well, thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, and um, you are giving a workshop. Uh, we just finished with a workshop here at, at the NRB, where you talked about how to finance a film. So I guess I just want to know, like, how did you, as a musician, get into directing films? Uh, well, I studied filmmaking in uh, college along with music, and um, when I got out of college, uh, the music opportunities came first, but um, um, when I got my first rec recording contract, the uh, label wanted a music video, and they didn't have enough money to actually hire a professional, so they let me take the money and create my own music video, and uh, that just kind of kept one foot in filmmaking. Then I started getting hired by other artists to direct their videos, and eventually I got into longer form. Uh, pieces and made this shift to filmmaking about 10 years ago. Okay. Well, um, so tell me, uh, the, the movie that you uh, recently directed was uh, Blue, uh, Blue Light Jazz. So why did you get connected with that story? Why did you decide that you had to do that as a movie? Yeah, I'd uh, read the book, man, it's been seven years ago. And uh, even though it's not a book that you would put down and think, I see this movie in my head, it was just one of those situations where I got to make this my next movie. There was uh, a lot in there that I thought would would make a really interesting screenplay. So I pitched Don Miller, the author of the book, um, on turning into a movie. Uh, he asked if he could help write the screenplay, so he joined my uh, collaborator Ben Pearson and myself. We worked on the screenplay for about six months and uh, ended up coming up with a screenplay we thought was really good. And then we tried raising the money for Blue Light Jazz. and. Uh, that didn't go as well. And, it, and I think that's the challenging part is, uh, is and, and what makes this movie unique is the, is the unique way that you raise your funds. Yeah, it was, uh, we were, got uh, barely enough money together to shoot the movie and then at the last minute uh, one of the investors dropped out. So a bunch of people who wanted to see the movie made started the Save Blue Like Jazz campaign on Kickstarter.com and uh, in 30 days they raised almost $350,000 from like 4,500 backers across the country and around the world, and uh, that's why we got to make the movie. Okay. And you said, of course, with uh, these crowdfunding campaigns, you have uh, incentives, and one of the incentives was that you would have a personal phone call with the people that, uh, that uh, donated, and so you had how many calls to make? Well, I didn't think this was going to work, so I said anybody who gives us $10 or more, I'll call them and thank them personally. So I ended up with 3,500 phone calls to make. And uh, it took me about a year to make the calls, um, but uh, I got to just say I loved making the calls because it was a chance to connect with all these people that had helped make our dream come true and um, uh, there was just a lot of generous people out there and they were all very enthusiastic about being a part of something that ended up being a historic uh, fundraising effort. Yeah. Well, I, I know in this workshop you talked about um, creativity and, 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 and being committed to excellence in, in your projects and whether it's music or whether it's film, I mean that's something that's very important to you, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, you know, many times uh, we don't set the bar high enough, um, and uh, filmmaking in particular is just, it's a really hard craft. As I said earlier, it's, it's hard to even make a bad movie. So um, uh, if, we're, if we're aiming to make good ones, we have to, uh, we just have to really study the craft. We have to put in the hours um, and uh, set the bar higher. Great. Well, so good to talk to you. I know, you know, so many people remember you from your, your music in the 80s. And I mean, I, I had some of your albums and stuff. So I feel very honored to meet you as both a musician and, and as a film director. So anyway, thank you so much and blessings to all of your future projects. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. And you're watching Christian Movie Connect.